Hey guys, welcome to the Creative Block Podcast. I'm Vince Gonzalez. Today I'm chatting with Neil Fitzhugh, aka Fitzy, head of creator partnerships with Schiller. Schiller, scheduled to launch in April of this year, is a broadcast platform for artists and creatives where everything is shoppable while combining the best of Web3 technology. Schiller was recently in the news. Sam Jones, its founder, has announced Snoop Dogg as co founder. Snoop hopes to reach more of his fans directly using the Schiller app. Thank you, Neil, for being on the show. And um, tell tell us in your words what what Schiller is and how do you expect uh, future content creators to use it? Yeah, so what I think is best to do is maybe start with as short a version as possible. Um, so Schiller is a streaming platform. So there's, there's three things to consider. You, you mentioned a broadcasting platform, streaming platform. Um, so that's the first part that I would address. So video rooms or audio rooms or video stages or audio stages may be a better way to explain it. Um, most of us in Web3 understand social audio through Twitter spaces, Clubhouse, that kind of thing. Um, we have the ability for creators opening rooms to choose whether they want to do that in a video or an audio room. Um, the second part is um, Web3 architecture. Um, so out of the box, we have uh, things like token gating and there's three levels there that we can cover later in the in the show. Um, and we build out additional things like on-platform minting and again, can go into more detail about how that will work and the benefit of that and, and how that will help creators monetize. And then the third part of Schiller is we have a social commerce engine. Um, and it just essentially means if anybody's aware of what social commerce is in China and, and, and predominantly the, uh, the East rather than the West these days, um, it just allows creators and, and people generally to sell things more easily. Um, and that could be a digital asset like an NFT, or that could be a physical asset like, you know, the jacket you're wearing, um, if that were for sale. So that's the three pillars it is. <laughs> of Schiller. Oh, perfect. Well, that's, that's a good example. <laughs> That's amazing. And so when I think about uh, audiences that maybe don't have a grasp on this kind of uh, um, environment, like I think about people that are on Etsy or that are selling on Amazon, do you envision at some point getting those people as well? I mean, yes. The, the short answer is yes. If, if somebody has something to sell um and that could be on an etsy page it could be on a shopify page it could be you're a founder of an nft project and you know you, you want to drive traffic towards there the actual behavior of driving traffic is as simple as copying a url to a product and as i mentioned it doesn't matter whether that's physical or digital it doesn't matter whether that's on etsy or OpenSea uh, nft marketplace for example um the behavior is the same and Ultimately, social commerce is very powerful in terms of conversion and marketing. Um, and yeah, so that's the long version. But the short answer is yes. Anybody that wants to sell something can do that on Schiller. So as an artist, you can almost imagine uh, not just somebody who has to sell, but uh, a content creator using this as part of their uh, uh, brand reach a part of them getting what they are. If they're a musician or a gamer, for example, you know, g getting their identity out in front of an audience. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's different levels. So um, if we think about one person from that list, and let's think about a music artist, right? And this music artist could be in Web3 or, or they could not be in Web3, i.e. they could be selling music NFTs or, or they might not be a traditional vinyl, CD, you know, MP3, whatever it is, right? Um, doesn't change how you would use the, the app. It doesn't change how you would, it doesn't change your behavior when opening a room with Schiller. So if we're using music artist um, and they want to perform their music for their audience, so they already have a community, then they can do that. And, and the, the good thing about Schiller is the thing that you're selling can be right there in the room and one click, you can go there if that's an artist, you can see the art. And again, one click and you go to wherever it is for sale. Um, worth clarifying at this point, in case I forget to later, 
in those transactions, Shiller is not inserting itself. So it's not like, oh, we allow it to be easy for you to sell something and then we take 10% from your Etsy store or your Shopify. Like, we couldn't do that and therefore we're not doing that. So it's worth clarifying that to anybody that's thinking, you know, yeah, but surely Shiller's taking money from us. Um, and the answer is no, we're not. With the Snoop partnership, what kinds of content would you expect fans of the dog father to be seeing as he goes forward with you guys and, and uh, starts adding to this? In terms of generally on the platform or from Snoop himself via the platform, do you mean? Uh, Snoop through Schiller. I mean, it would be silly of me to say what Snoop will do. Um, but what we know Snoop is good at is selling himself, being um, a very likable character. And this is important, I believe, in, in building community and, and streaming. Um, if you want audience, you know, Snoop is Snoop. Um, but yeah. he is a very personable person. So he might have rooms where he just talks to people. Like I would imagine that is something he would do. Probably smokes a, a blunt or a joint uh, with some people on his own platform. I mean, come on, he's bound to do that. I, again, I don't control Snoop, but... Um, I'm fairly confident that he'll have weed around him um, <laughs> at most times, if not all times. Um, music. Look, the guy The guy is a, is a hip-hop legend, legend generally, you know, popular culture legend. So music, but he's done everything. So again, long answer is any of the above. Short answer is who knows. Um, we do have some cool things that we will do with stuff like that. Um, I can't really say too much about it, but imagine the kind of things that we can do working in NFT world and having token gating on experiences when our founder is Snoop. So, of course, you know, we, we have plans for um, fully utilizing the fact that, you know, we have a co-founder as, as legendary as um, Snoop. It's a good get. Yeah, I mean, I was pretty happy to join the company. <laughs> And I'll, obviously, I, I, w I will talk yeah. at some point about you know, the whole Snoop Sam relationship. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy working for Sheila. Can't lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's cool. Uh, and we can get into that. I wanted to ask you: Do you think that there, in addition to him and his brand, do you think that there will be also any um, death row content that comes through it? I mean, it's no secret. You know, he's literally just put that back on Apple Music. You know, he, he took it off these. Um, DSPs and he he's an owner now. So again, I, I can't say that I've, I've called Snoop and said, you know, what are you going to do? But he has music to sell. He has back catalog. He has products. Yes. He has IP. Um, he is a businessman. You know, that, that's one thing that everybody should know about. Him. Regardless of how you found him, he was selling something. He was doing something. He was building something. He's an entrepreneur that spanned, you know, decades. So um, the music stuff, again, fairly confident. He'll be leveraging his own platform to promote, perform, sell. Can't guarantee it, but, it, it, you know, it's a hop, skip and a jump. Um, it's not difficult to imagine him doing that. So, and again, that's the kind of thing it's here for. Um, and so music, of course, is, is something very um, uh, central to, you know, his passions, if not, if not his biggest passion. Um, so yeah, music, Schiller, performances, the ability to have, and this is probably worth bringing up now, the idea, um, not the idea, the ability to have, um, OBS software integration, um, the ability to connect multiple mics, multiple cams, you know, high quality production. Um, oh, wow. so that's, that's something that Schiller will have. Um, so we're not just talking about a point and click you know, point and film um, type environment, although for many people it will be that. But for those that want to take it to the next level of production, of quality, and make these rich experiences for, the, for their audiences, for the communities, um, that is possible with Schiller. So very confident he'll be utilizing that as well. That's pretty exciting. I mean, if you think about, you know, either like tiny desk style performances or if you think about round tables, you know, uh, that that's a really exciting prospect. I can see, uh, you know, a lot of people. That's a really dynamic feature, I think, that, you know, potentially would set you guys apart. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I when I joined the company and I was, you know, understanding how this would work and, and kind of the experience, um, and then music, obviously, with, with Snoop, I was thinking, well, versus, if anybody who's watching this watches any of these kind of versus battles, um, a company that um, Timberland and Swizz Beats, I believe, created during COVID um, to do perform. And, and Snoop, in fact, performed with um, or against, should I say, uh, DMX in like a battle yeah. track by track um, thing. This is very good for that you know if, if you have the ability to be in la and then somebody else is in i don't know wherever they are in the world new york london japan um and they want to perform their tracks and sell said tracks within the room and they want to gate it let's go one step further they want to gate it to only owners of their nfts so to to provide their community with utility all of that can be done in Schiller. so you know the the example that you use of, you know, thinking about other um, masterclass is another one, you know, another platform where people will impart wisdom, give knowledge, educate, um, again, education, big, big thing we, we, we fully foresee being used um, on Schiller, whether that's Web3 education or, you know, traditional forms. Um, it can do the lot, it can do the job it can facilitate behaviors and content that many other platforms already do. Um, but it does, it can do all of it essentially. And I'm not, that sounds bad coming out of my mouth. Oh, it can do everything. Um, let's get out of the blocks first. Let's get launched. Let people try it before we start being too bullish. Any company can fail. Right. But, um, it, it has the ability to do pretty cool stuff. That's really exciting. Now, last night I, I went on the website and I put my wallet on. So I'm excited to to sort of get in and play at some point, because I think even what I do here uh, it has possible application. And I look forward to sort of exploring what that looks like. Um, when you guys were building this out, did you have a um, particular type of artist in mind or content creator? Or were was it more what you just mentioned? You were just thinking about uh, educators, you know, discussions, music, roundtable. Is it more like that? Were you thinking a, a, a lot of different uh, styles? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great question and it's one that comes up quite often and, and sometimes it comes up in different ways. You know, other people have framed it as, you know, you're saying it's a Web3 streaming platform. Does that mean that you only want to have Web3 creators? At, you know, and again, for anybody that's not fully aware of what that means, people that play within the kind of crypto NFT uh, blockchain space and, and create, you know, NFTs, let's say to buy, sell or, or anything like that. So in terms of the audience, in terms of the users as a creator, the ability to host these rooms, I, I would think about it as like a funnel, but like an inverted funnel. So we start like with Web3 creators because right now the idea of token gating a room, um, you know, understanding what Web3 is, there's only a small population of the world that know that. So, and, and that they're, they're the absolute innovators, you know, we're at the bleeding edge of tech. If, we, if you work in web three, as, as you know, if you live in web three, if you participate, this is the bleeding edge, you know, whether it's blockchain, whether it's AI, whether it's all of the above, it's, it's incredible. So uh, to begin with the content creators that we are onboarding, which is a quite a small pool, it'll be five, 600, maybe by the time we go live, um, they will be within Web3. Um, however, and this is maybe a good time to come on to this next point um, of something else we can do after the token gating. Um, and again, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll finish the point and then we'll come back to that. Um, finish the point, what was the point? Um, yeah, so beginning in Web3 and then essentially any creator, any podcaster, any Twitch streamer, any YouTuber, any Spaces host, any clubhouse host, any artist, whether that's digital assets or traditional assets, brands, companies, honestly, anything, anything. So it will start in Web3. This is where we planted the company because we have Web3 architecture under the hood. Um, but in a very short space of time, anybody will be accepted as a creator. You and I talked uh, a couple of days ago, we had a, a brief pre-meeting, and I think 
you said something that was really brilliant. At some point, we're going to stop talking about Web3. And we're just going to start talking about consumers and content creators. And uh, I think that um, we might be getting to that point, you know, cl closer than we think. I imagine that even with content being captured on your platform, potentially, you know, put on Instagram or, you know, relayed back on Facebook or LinkedIn. Is that, is that something that, that you see as well? Again, I, in terms of repurposing content, yes. You know, what content creators will tell you is that if you can make it easy for them to create in place A and have that, you know, easily frictionlessly also sent to be repurposed to multiple platforms, then that's the dream. You don't want to have to manually do it everywhere and then go repeat it here and repeat it here. Um, you know, less effort essentially is, is, is better if you can get there for the same quality. Um, in terms of, there was a point I was going to make, which was your starting point. Yeah, the idea of, like, I think I mentioned the phrase that I use currently, which is Web3. I'm sick of saying it. I'm sick of saying it. And it's just the new web. And so Web3, at some point, the three is just going to fall off. And it won't be known as that. It's just going to be, oh, well, this is this is the web now and you can do more things in cooler ways because you have that blockchain integration and interconnectedness and, and interoperability and, and things like that. So I know I'm making two points at the same time. So let me know if I've not answered the question. But um, yeah, back to your original point. That's something I feel strongly about. It's, you know, we're not always going to be saying Web3, Web3, Web3. It's, it's, a, it's just a cycle. It's just a phase of iteration of the internet that we're currently in. And because we all know what we're talking about and we love talking about it, we use that lexicon. Um, it's not necessary a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah, soon not to be necessary. Um, is, what does the rest of the year look like for you? So now you guys are currently, you know, bringing on accounts. Uh, my understanding is you're scheduled to launch in April. And then, so what is, what is, between April and end of year, what does that look like for you? So <clears throat> in terms of launch, it, it was already supposed to be launched. And I don't mind saying that this, this is the world of tech and sometimes there are delays. Um, April is the current trajectory, um, end of April more specifically. But I think I mentioned this a couple of days ago when we chatted, right? If it's May, it's May. Um, we're not gonna bring it to market if it's not ready. And, and it's gonna be an MVP um anyway which you know it will do all the things that i'm saying but still it needs to be um stable robust robust and, and and be fully stretch tested before we release it given the amount of eyeballs that will be on it due to who our uh, co-founder is so yeah let's say around the end of april uh, as opposed to april and we're, we're pretty much there Give us a little bit of a background on Sam. Yeah, okay. So um, let me give you the shortest version. I could make this long, but we can always delve deeper if we want to, right? So Sam Jones, um, who is the, the co-founder alongside Snoop, um, co-founder um, who is a, a tech entrepreneur, a career entrepreneur, um, previously built a social uh, commerce platform hence why Schiller has social commerce under the hood. Um, that social commerce platform is called Oo, for anybody who wants to go and research that. That's O-O-O-O-O.com, five O's.com. Um, if, if anyone's interested, Oo is the name because Oo is the sound of when you find something you want to buy online. Um, <laughs> and so that's something that he, he built with a guy called Eric Zhang and, and, and Eric Zhang, was X musically, which, which went on to become TikTok. So, you know, we're talking about people with good pedigree. Um, who is the social commerce tech underneath the hood, which allows the selling behaviors um, and the sort of showing of products and, and linking someone straight through to it. So why did he build who is an interesting story. So he was the managing director at wish.com, um, which I'm assuming most of your audience would, would have at least heard of. Um, they made quite a lot of noise, to say the least, marketing-wise. Um, probably five years ago now, maybe. I think it was the World Cup 2018 was when I 
kind of saw the brand um, with the activations that they did with all the footballers like Paul Pogba and Neymar and, you know, a whole slew of uh, superstars. Um, and this leads into how Snoop, why Snoop. So when he was in that position at Wish, he also did activations multiple times with Snoop and, and got to know him and people like Kendall Jenner. And um, there's a funny story about the Kendall Jenner thing, which I can go into at some point. Um, it's nothing to do with Schiller, but I always think it's quite funny. Um, but the point I was saying was to say, yes, so, so that's what he was. He was there working at Wish as MD, spent a lot of his entrepreneurial life and his business life in Asia, uh, Singapore, Hong Kong. Um, and so I was fully aware of social commerce and the, the behaviors and the conversion associated with it in, in China, for example, and I believe Southeast Asia, but uh, obviously the big market is China. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so I said to wish we should do this. This is the short version. Obviously they said, uh, nope. He said, okay, built ooh, left ooh, sorry, left wish built ooh. Um, and then because of that existing relationship with Snoop, him also being in web three, building a new platform, Schiller, it all kind of comes together. Um, you know, so maybe not the smoothest explanation, but I'm assuming your kind of listeners and viewers can <laughs> get the main beats of that story. So let's dive into this a little bit deeper. Uh, it's easy to think on the surface, this is something just for the web three years, but that's not necessarily the case, is it? No, it's not. And it's a great question, a great point to clarify. So right now, as I mentioned earlier, a creator who is accepted is somebody who is participating in Web3, who is a Web3 artist, who is a Web3 project, who has a Web3 project, um, or who is hosting rooms, you know, discussing things that are Web3 or Web3 adjacent, let's say crypto NFTs, that kind of thing. Um, but this is for, as I mentioned earlier, for anybody. So, you know, a couple of months after launch, two to three months after launch, we're going to add a feature we don't have a, an external language for this yet, but internally we'll just call this creator tokens or access tokens. And for anybody that's not in Web3, they don't need to know anything about Web3 at that point. So you can create basically access tokens. They are NFTs, but you, you don't need to understand that because the UI of the app will just be for the creator. So how many do you want to create? To, you know, How many access tokens do you want to create for people? 1000 or 100 okay great how much do you want to charge for access to this content regardless of what type of content it is regardless of how many followers they have regardless of how long they've been streaming like regardless of all of those things this is this is dealer's choice um and so at that point the ui will simply be saying how many do you want to create how much do you want to create them and there will be nfts for someone that comes in but the wallet on shillab at that point will be automatically provided when you download the app. So to give that in a more visual experience or a, a kind of user journey, this is what will happen in about three months after launch. Somebody will see the app, download the app, boom, you have a Web3 wallet with the ability to hold NFTs and crypto. We provide that to you for free. Okay, you have that. You find something, you've you set up your account a few minutes, now I'm browsing, do I want to view this? Do I want to view that? Do I want to go into this room? Do I want to go into that room? Ah, I want to go into here. You, it's open, you can go in, no problem. The next one. Oh, it says I need to buy a token. Oh, okay. The language will not be anything to do with Web3. It will not be Mint, it will not be NFTs, it will just be buy. And you can use Fiat, you know, Stripe, standard, standard cards, Web2 stuff, everyday stuff. Um, You'll have an NFT if you buy that in your now wallet, but you don't have to think about that. It's, it's sitting there and it doesn't have to do anything else. It just got you the access and you paid the money and now you're in. So think about that from the creator's journey. Someone finds the app, comes in, has a wallet with us. Um, if they want to attach their own wallet, if they're in Web3, great, but let's assume they're not. Okay, I want to create on the platform. Okay, so it's not me coming and buying, it's me now saying I want to sell, like I said a minute ago. How many do I want to sell? Um, how much? And then users come in and buy access or they don't. If they don't buy it, they can't come in. Um, and if they do buy it, they can. Um, and it's worth saying at this point though that I'm kind of 
lying there because there is a third option for access and that is that you can create rooms with Shiller where holders of anybody can come in whether they hold the the token the the, the access token or the nft um anybody can come in but in these rooms which is like the third, the third tier of of our token getting on off or middle um anybody can come in but only holders of the token can do certain things so they can come on stage and speak to the person hosting they can use the live chat so um it is for anybody it is for anybody and everybody and that will happen quite quickly on shilla that is our goal we're not just saying we're here to capture a you know i don't know how many people are in web3 actively participating let's call it let's call it fifty thousand people right I, I don't think it's really that in terms of actively participating um but this is for everybody you know you don't you don't have snoop help build it and then say most people in the world can't come in that would be the wildest business decision of all time so again long-winded explanation but hopefully it tells the story of this is not just for people who are in web3 I love it. I love it. And and just so you know, I'm a fan of the long winded answer. So, um, uh, <laughs> well, that's that's convenient. <laughs> that's really amazing. So, I, I it's going to be really exciting to watch uh, how this plays out. And I, I would imagine that there's probably going going to be content creators that use it in a way that you guys probably aren't even expecting. Thousand percent. No, this 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 is something that I've said many times. Like we don't think where going to have imagined all the possible use cases for Shiller. Someone's going to come and do something with NFTs on this platform and we're going to go, wow, we didn't think that you could do that with this. But there's so many cool things you can do. In fact, if you have time, I can tell you a story about a guy that I know called Ben. Yeah, yeah, He's doing absolutely. some really, really cool stuff. So he hosts Twitter spaces and the content is about art. And so he knows I've got this community, this small community of a few hundred people who will turn up and um, listen to me interview artists. So every week, um, his project's called Audio Galleries, by the way. So um, he minted these NFTs, um, an open edition lot of NFTs for, um, for free, I believe. I think they were free. Yeah. And then this is, in fact, let me let me kind of, Give this, I want to get this right because this is kind of cool. So I want to make sure I'm giving this in the right way. So he has this project that's been called Audio Galleries. And so underneath it's NFTs. Okay. But essentially it doesn't change his behavior when he's um, doing these Twitter spaces where he just interviews artists about their art and has a pinned tweet with their art and people can go buy it if they want. Right. Very similar behaviors to, to what you would do with Schiller. Um, however, he has minted these NFTs and people who come to the room and hold the NFT afterwards can go and mint a special piece that that artist created for his community. <laughs> so every week he comes in and says, okay, I'm going to interview these people. Anybody can listen or, you know, if, if it is on video in the future, anybody can watch. Um, but only my holders can go to this site because it's token gated you know, the, the actual purchase is dependent on holding said NFT. So his community get utility by him knowing these artists and interviewing them and then being prepared to come and speak to him and them, but also create a, a piece of art that only they can collect, only they can mint. Now, what that does is that drives income to him as the host, um, which isn't dependent on ads, which again, the power of NFTs, right? This is the kind of things that people should be considering that he's he's now got an income stream based on the fact that he created these NFTs. Um, in Shiller, of course, if you use Shiller, then he'd be able to sell those NFTs in the room. So if you, if you come in, as I mentioned, um, he'd say, okay, you can all come in and listen and, and, and watch and everything. But if you want to be able to mint this piece that we're talking about, you're going to have to click on the NFT and, and, and buy it. And our platform will facilitate that very easily for him. Um, so again, probably a long winded, winded way, but he's, he's, he's building his content and the behaviors of his audience, his connection to the audience, the benefit to his audience has changed because of the fact that he's leveraging NFTs to add what, what we call like a, a mechanic 
that, that there are some mechanics to utilize to give benefit, provide value to his community. That is really beyond just being a fan and it's a co-creator almost, you know, it's a next level participation uh, from an audience member. I mean, let, let me let me try and filter this through a prism of you, right, for your audience. So yeah. your audience tune into you, you add value to them, whether that's entertainment, education or whatever it is they get. Um, right. That exact mechanic that I just explained for arts or artist spotlight rooms or art loving communities is not specific to art. It, it's a red herring, the whole NFTs art thing. It's, 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 you know, it's anything. It's the behavior is the important thing. So, you know, you host rooms, you have uh, an audience, you know, your podcast. If you had NFTs that did similar things that added value back to them and anybody can watch this thing, but you know, there's additional content or there's additional access or there's additional information, education, something attached to ownership of the NFT. Um, you know, I'm sure you talk about this with your audience anyway, but it's always worthwhile. I like to give, if I'm giving an art example, I like to give another example because NFTs and art seem to be intermingled, intertwined, and many people can't get past the JPEG part of NFTs, but it's right. any behavior with any community that can be enriched is a, is a good word I like. You know, you can enrich the experience through NFTs if done correctly. Um, Starbucks doing great things with their loyalty rewards program. Yeah. Don't, yeah. I think they're worth like a one and a half thousand dollars now. Some of those uh, NFTs. That's amazing. So, you know, I got to look at that closer. More than just a free uh, yeah. It's an exciting, it's an exciting prospect and thinking about, you know, all of the utility because I am a fan of art and I love art as art, but you know, thinking about, utility included inside those pieces that you own is is really exciting for me as a content creator whatever the product is whether it's an nft or whether it's a anything that's how shiller works with people whether it's the user who gets access to it without having to go anywhere or it's the person who has something to sell um and by the way caveat i would add here is not everybody will sell something via shiller like people will just host rooms and show stuff and you know they won't necessarily be selling something that's fine but it has the ability to drive sales should they want to use it at some point um you don't have to no one's holding a gun to anybody's head saying you must sell something on chiller um it's very relaxed actually yeah that's cool that's cool i i look forward to explore exploring it more um fitzy Thank you very much for your time today. This was amazing. I'm really looking forward to see how all this plays out for you guys and to watch this uh, as it develops. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm. thank you. I appreciate it. You are, you are currently uh, very far away right now. And so uh, we had to sort of coordinate our time, but I really, really do appreciate your time. No, thank you for having me on. I, I, I like talking about it, as you can hopefully tell. Um, and, you know, we appreciate you know, your time as well. And, you know, obviously great show that you're hosting here. And um, maybe in the future, I'll come on when we've actually done something, you know, this is all really bullish talk from me. But uh, but again, I'm a realist. Until we've done it, judge us on what we do, right? J judge us on whether we actually do this. Um, so, you know, maybe I'll come back when we have done that. I would love that. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how we're going. Yeah, absolutely. I would love that. Uh, we'll reach out and reconnect again uh, in a little while. That'd be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah.